Hello students, welcome to class 8 computer science. So today we will be continuing with the chapter networking concepts. So this is the part 2 of this particular chapter and this is the final part of this chapter. So if you haven't watched part 1 already, you can always check out. I have given the link in the description. So today's topics of discussion will be types of networks and network security. So let's begin with the types of network. So basically there are three types of network. So the first is LAN or local area network. The second is MAN or metropolitan area network. And the third is WAN or wide area network. Let's discuss them one by one in details. So let's begin with LAN. So what is LAN? So a LAN is comprised of computers located within close proximity such as in an office or building. So let's say you there is an office and in that office there are let's say three floors so you want to and there are let's say 20 computers in that particular office and which is spread around all the three floors so if you want to connect the computers all the computers of that particular office then you will be using the network LAN okay so the geographical area or the range of LAN is very very small so you can typically Connect the computers which are located in close proximity such as in an office or within a building. So this is a general diagram of LAN network. So, so if the computers are close by then you can use the help of LAN. The next one is MAN which is also known as Metropolitan Area Network. So, a MAN is a network that interconnects users with computer resources in a geographic area or region larger than that covered by even a large local area network but smaller than the area covered by a wide area network. So, let's say you want to connect the computers which are spread across a city. Let's say you live in the city Chennai and you want to connect the computers, all the computers of Chennai, then you will be using the network man or metropolitan area network so as you can see the range of man is greater as compared to LAN okay I'll discuss about why when in the next slide so this is a typical example of a man so many small small lands may be there as you can see here how many buildings are there one two three four five five buildings are there and all the computers of a particular building can be connected with the help of a LAN so now if you want to connect all the computers which are spread across a particular city then you will require the help of the network MAN. Let's go to the third type of network which is WAN or wide area network. So a WAN is a network of computers that are situated further apart but still connected. Such a network might be of computers within a single state agency or a multinational corporation worldwide. Now, if you want to connect the computers all over the world, then it will form the network WAN or wide area network. The internet that you are using now for watching my video is a part of WAN or wide area network. So what is an example of wide area network? Internet is an example of wide area network. So this is a typical diagram of a WAN. So if the computers are located geographically apart and spread across different countries, different states, then you'll be using the network WAN. So these are different, different small, small networks. And if they are connected together, it forms a WAN. Okay. So as you can see in all the three types of networks, the difference comes in the geographical area. LAN covers the least geographical area, MAN covers a little bit more area across the city and WAN covers the highest area. When is the LAN used? LAN is used in case of offices and MAN is used for connecting the computers within a city and a typical example of MAN is cable TV network and WAN is used for connecting computers all over the world. Internet is an example of WAN. Next, we'll go to the difference between all these type of networks. So at first, we'll be seeing the difference between LAN and WAN. So let's start with LAN. So LAN is restricted to a limited geographical area. As you already know that the range or geographical area of LAN is very limited. 
but WAN covers greater distance and operates worldwide. So the distance covered by WAN is greater and it, as it operates worldwide. In LAN, the computer terminals are physically connected with wires. So if you want to connect the computers with the <coughs> help of a LAN, then you have to take the help of wires. Okay. But in case of WAN, the computer terminals are not physically connected with wires. So how can you get such a long wire which connects across different different countries? So here that computer terminals may are not connected with wires, they are connected wirelessly. Data speed is very fast in case of LAN. Why? Because the uh, range is small. So communication is happening only between uh, a small range of computers. Therefore, the data speed in case of LAN is very, very fast. But the data speed is slow in WAN as compared to LAN because it involves many computers spread across the world. A few data transmission errors occur. As there are a fewer number of computers in LAN, so less data transmission error will occur in case of LAN. But in case of WAN, there is a chance of larger data transmission errors. Data transmission error means suppose you are sending ABC through a wire. But while it has gone from the source to the destination, ABC has turned into let's say XYB. So you are sending ABC but you are receiving XYB. So it is a case of data transmission error which is less in LAN but more in case of WAN. Let's go to the next difference, which is the difference between LAN and MAN. The points of LAN will be similar, but the points of MAN will be different. So LAN is restricted to a limited geographical area, but MAN covers greater distance as compared to LAN by spreading across a city. As the range of MAN is spread across a city, we can say that it covers a greater geographical area as compared to LAN. Next is, in LAN the computers are physically connected with the wires, but in MAN the computers may be connected, there is a little chance that the computers may be connected physically through wires, but here wireless media is also used. Data speed is fast in case of LAN, but it is slower in case of MAN as compared to LAN. In MAN also the data speed is fast, but if we go to compare it with LAN, it is a little bit slower. An example of LAN is the communication between computers in an office. So if you are connecting the computers within an office, then it will be an example of LAN. But a cable TV network is an example of metropolitan area network or MAN. Let's see the last difference, which is the difference between WAN and MAN. So WAN covers a greater distance, but MAN covers lesser distance as compared to WAN. WAN operates worldwide, but MAN spreads across a city. In WAN, computer terminals are not physically connected with wires, but in MAN, it may be physically connected, it may, may, may not be physically connected. Example of WAN is internet, example of MAN is, as we have seen in the previous slide, it is cable TV network. Okay, I hope you are clear about the types of network. Let's go to our next topic of today's part, which is network security. So the number of uses of internet is increasing day by day. With the increase in the number of internet, the number of computers is also increasing. Therefore, the need to secure the network is very much essential. So what is network security? It refers to protecting data and resources from unauthorized person. So whatever data you have in your computer, you will not want that those data should be accessible by some unauthorized persons. So therefore, there is a need for securing the network. So why network should be secured? Because there are certain threats to network security. What are the threats? Let's see them one by one. So some employees may try to access confidential information. So in an office, not all information is accessible by everyone. Let's say in a school, certain information is confidential only for the principal of the school. But if some other employee who is not authorized to view that information views it, then it will be a threat to the network security. Accidental or unwanted deletion of important information. Some 
employees may accidentally delete unwanted information. Next, former employees may try to harm the company's data. Let's say initially you were working for the company A, now you have migrated to the company B. So now when you have got gone to the company B, you may have the uh, user ID or password of the previous employer and you may harm their data. So these are certain threats to network security. So people outside the company may try to access confidential data. This is again very, very dangerous. If someone who is not of a particular organization tries to see the confidential information of a particular organization, this is also one of the threat to network security. Therefore, there are certain levels of network security which are implemented. There are basically two levels of network security. They are number one, login security and number two, write security. Let's see them one by one. What is login security? Let's say you all have a Facebook account and while using your Facebook account, can anyone else, can anyone and everyone log in into your Facebook account? No, he or she cannot log in into your Facebook account because you have something known as username and password. So this for this is called login security. So let's say this is the home page of Facebook. So for accessing your account, you have to put your email or phone number and your password. Only if your email and email and password matches, then only will get access to your account. Okay, so this is the level of security. Otherwise, anyone and everyone can see your profile and they can delete information, update some false information regarding you and so on. So how can we define network security? So in this level of network security, an user is given a unique login name and password. Okay, this is most often used in websites, a username and password is given so that the things are personalized. Next is right security. So even if one website is accessible by many, there may be various levels of security. You, let's say, so let us consider one organization. Let's say, let's consider a company. Let's say the name of the company is ABC. Let's say in the company, there is a manager, there is a clerk. And let's say they have a website called www.abc.com. The manager is using the website abc.com. The clerk is also using the website abc.com. But the features of the manager will be more as compared to the features of the clerk. So this is called your right security. That means even if a particular website is used by different users, the rights of different users will be different. So the manager may be able to view the information of clerk, but the clerk should not be able to view the information of the other employees. So this is known as right security. So what is right security if we have to define it? So based on your username, you are given rights like read only access, read write access and no access at all. A combination of rights may also be granted to the same user for different sets of data. Let's say nowadays most of the schools, they use a facility known as app. So in an app, that app is used by the teachers also, by the principal also and by the students also. But the home page of different users, home page of student will be different from the home page of teacher. Home page of principal will be different from the home page of both student and teachers. Let's see an example. So let's say this is the home page of an administrator or the main person of a particular organization. As you can see, there are different features like update academic calendar, report card setup, dynamic report card, and many features are there. But let's say this is the home page of a particular student. So as you can see, the features of a student are less as compared to the features of the manager of that particular organization. So even if you are using the same uh, website, 
then also your rights may be different. This is known as right security. So how many levels of security are there? There are two levels of security. First is login security, which gives you the username and password. And next is right security, which gives different rights to different users, even though they are using the same website. So based on today's discussion, this leads to our the end of this particular chapter. I've given some questions, so you should try to attempt this question. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next chapter. I hope this session was useful.